Hi folks, Ricky Tang here. Now you find me in a rather good mood today. Um, that's because uh, a little device turned up in the post. Now uh, I wasn't expecting it today. I was hoping it was going to turn up, but um, because of the industrial action recently in the UK with the Royal Mail service, I was having my doubts. Uh, what's turned up? Well, it's this, if you can see it, probably ought to read it fine. The Wonderlink device. So this device plugs into your BMW motorcycle navigation preparation and I've refitted mine. <laughs> I've actually had this taken off before I had the bike delivered to me because I didn't think I'd ever need it. So they delivered it in a bag basically. So I've refitted it because the Wonderlink navigation unit, which you'll be seeing shortly, plugs into this. It attaches to that navigation unit. Now, what does it do? It connects to your phone via Bluetooth and an application you've got to install on your Android or Apple device. And then basically the phone can act a bit like the Navigator 6. You can do navigation with it critically with the Wonder Wheel. Uh, it can also control some apps and compatible ones that are outside of that Wonderlink app in your phone. So it can let you go to your phone's home screen and actually activate apps. Not that you should be doing that really while you're riding because that's a bit dangerous. So if you have your phone mounted as well and you can see it, and I've got a plan for that as well once the uh, Wonderlink is fitted to the bike, uh, you can actually uh, use it for navigation, like I say. You can use it for performance logging, data logging, fault logging. You can use it to control your music as well, potentially if you've got a headset on your helmet. The thing that I'm looking forward to trying, <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, I don't know if it's going to work yet, is the data logging side. So what I want to do is, is get performance metrics out of the bike or basically out of the ECU, get them logged inside the app and then extract that, export that as a text file or a data file of some description, mess about a bit, merge it into my videos and hopefully you'll be seeing that data on my next track day. First step though is preparation. So I haven't done anything yet. Um, so uh, I've got to get this little blanking cover off my uh, sat nav prep which is easy enough I'll get my key pull out go there so all that is just a simple cover for the uh, electronic pins on the sat nav prep so here's the wonderlink device itself now it's uh, that side with the pin marks on it that goes against the sat nav prep these are to allow me to attach a magnetic mount for my phone so I'll get to that a little later on so the first step is just to click this into the sat nav prep and lock it again to be honest this um, locking mechanism isn't particularly strong or secure if someone was determined enough they could just take that probably rip it out of the mount and they'll be uh, off down the road with my 200 pound device so the next step is to turn the bike on now I wish I didn't have to complicate things. This should be easy, but I'm a little concerned. My mobile phone where the Wonderlink app is installed is also separately connected to my motorbike via Bluetooth. So somehow there's gonna be two Bluetooth connections going on. <laughs> one to the bike and then one to the Wonderlink, which talks to the bike. I'm not sure how that's all gonna pan out, but ultimately that's what I want to happen. I want two Bluetooth connections going on. Um, so we'll see if it all meshes together nicely. Let's turn the bike on. Now, somewhere there should be a light. Ah, yes, you see a green flashing light, hopefully, on the Wonderlink. It went green initially, and now it's flashing blue, as per the instructions, so that's good news. So now what I need to do is pair this device to my phone. So here's the exciting bit. So let's get the uh, sync started. Actually, my phone is already connected to the bike. Um, so anyway, let's have a little look for Wonderlink. Ah, oh, Wonderlink was at the bottom, already waiting in my uh, devices list. Let's pair, pair with it, say yes. Are we connected now? Two devices connected. Excellent, so the Wonderlink is connected. The R1250R is still connected, <laughs> fingers crossed. Now what's happened, um, now I don't think the GoPro will have quite the fidelity to do this, but now I have for the first time ever, actually I'll use my phone, um, for the first time ever on this bike, I now see the TFT and nav display options. 
So this uh, wonder wheel cannot control both the bike options and your navigation stroke one link options at the same time. It has to be switched from one mode to another. To do that, what you've got to do is hold down the uh, menu button, hold it and press it upwards. You see we are switched over to nav, press it downwards on the button and it switches back to TFT. So we'll go up to nav. The wonder wheel acts like a Bluetooth keyboard or Bluetooth mouse, a controller of sorts. So I can scroll up and down my apps list. I can go left, I can go right. Not quite sure how to um, essentially press enter and um, activate something. Yeah, so um, if I hold left on the wonder wheel and then let go, it's essentially like pressing the back button, the back arrow, and pressing right and holding it for a second or two and then letting go it's like pressing or doing a click or doing a push on the screen so i'll get my head around that that shouldn't be too bad to put the navigation control back to the tft back to the bike actually i thought it was a long hold on the menu button pushing down it's just a quick push now the next thing to do before i totally flatten the battery on my bike is to uh, run the wonderlink app on my phone wonderlink there you are yeah, I'm getting some data. I installed this a couple of days ago and basically every box had this little kind of um, essentially no data sign. Now I'm getting information about the bike so I can actually see my current mileage at 9878 miles. Excellent. This I'm quite excited about. I just twisted the throttle. So top right, I've rearranged some of these uh, data items. You can do it in the settings. It's a bit clunky, but it works. So if I twist the throttle, you can see, hopefully, the percent is going up and down. So if I can get that logged together with my gear position, together with my RPM, together with my lean angle, and if I can get all that out of the app and essentially into my videos, I'll be very happy. <laughs> this data kind of extraction, I, I thought I could do with the BMW app. It's one of the reasons, frankly, I bought the bike. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I didn't do enough research. I love the bike. I made a good choice. But one of the things that really turned me on to it was the fact that I thought that from the BMW connected app, I could get some performance data, like three or four lines of uh, information about the bike, throttle position, lean angle, um, revs, that sort of thing, and export that from the app. I can't though. All I can do is like um, navigation or travel data, position, GPS position and speed. So I was really disappointed when I, when I found that I couldn't get the good data out of that app. So hopefully this will actually do the job for me. So if I go for a little ride and I show that, that little ride on this video and you see lots of performance data overlaid on the screen during the ride, you know I've managed to get the data out of this app and get it uh, merged into my video. Sometimes you can swipe straight on the screen, but not all the time so it's a bit it's a bit well underdeveloped i think thing is i was quite disappointed actually i think the last time this app was updated was uh december 2021 according to the um google play store so that's very disappointing i was hoping for more um constant updates for this app and it's not happening so here's a display I've got my screen recording anyway, <laughs> so you'll be able to see it. But here's a display you can have. Uh, there is a secondary display. I've got to get there. Uh, how do you do it? Uh, oh, yeah, I know. If I can get there again. Hold it down. So you've got a, a compass option. A display that looks a little bit like the GS display and a little bit like my display. And a kind of a sporty display. A bit like my sports display as well on my bike. Then you have all these options. And you can actually pinch to show fewer options i'll go that way hold on uh which way around come on behave i'm expanding bugger go on <laughs> this is a struggle so getting fewer boxes on the screen so if you only want a few options on the screen you can control that so what are the settings on the home page you can specify your home address and it will kind of search for that using your navigation software of choice call a favorite number uh, call a contact from your phone book take a photo Go on, will that work? Anyway, moving on. Take a selfie. I presume that's working. Don't know. Um, start a video recording. Oh. 
start the trip log, save a waypoint and navigate to waypoint are both options inside the app itself, not the navigation app that you're using. Voice assistant, don't know how that's going to work. Um, well, let's press it, see what happens. What is the weather for today? So that's actually uh, run Google Assistant, I think. Settings, there are quite a few. I won't get into that in this video. And uh, last thing, oh no, hold on. Um, home screen, so yeah, if I go and press that, it gets me back into um, the same folder, I think, where I ran the Wonderlink from. And you can navigate back basically navigate around your Android or Apple device, which is interesting. I don't know if I'll be using it very much, but maybe. Okay, let's go for a little ride. Let's log some data. Actually, no, not yet. Got something else for you. I've also got this uh, magnetic mount. So this comes from the same company. Oh, Black Box Embedded are the manufacturer of the Wonderlink. So this screws onto there. Um, this attaches to the back of your phone or your phone case and you can see basically they whoa <laughs> that is evil that's some serious magnetic action let's try again i don't want to catch my fingers okay that's quite strong but with a 3m adhesive you really kind of got to get it right first time where you want your phone to mount so i'll have a little think about that So the good news is I do have data. Every uh, element you see on the screen here has been pulled from the CSV file, the comma separated values file that you can export after recording a trip. But the news is not all good. If you look at the throttle trace, which I'm uh, highlighting on the screen here, you can see it's actually only updating once per second. Now the RPM count above that that's updating more often, but to be honest with you, that I think is a little bit of interpolation or guesswork performed by the software that's imported this data. Because if you look at this next screen, bear with me, <laughs> if you look at this next screen, and if I highlight the, the timestamps, the time's only being recorded once per second. And there is no way in the app that I can see to increase the uh, recording frequency. And you'll need that for things like throttle trace recording, lean angle, RPMs and speed. So unfortunately, the news is not good in terms of getting the data out of the Wonderlink app and getting it on my screen. However, there is an alternative. So what I can do is get my Android phone to do a screen recording, record the Wonderlink app screen while it's actually just displaying the, the current data about the motorbike. Now, it's a screen recording, it's not actual data, it's not a data file, so I can't manipulate it. I can't turn these numbers into a graph, unfortunately, or, or a dial or a scope of some description, which is a shame. But at least I'm getting the information that I want, and it's displaying it at a much higher sampling rate than what you get with the actual exported uh, CSV file. In my video editor, I can actually separate all these boxes, choose which ones to display, choose which ones to switch off. So I can have these dotted around the screen. So this is quite a promising option, I think. Well, it's the best I've got, I think, with the Wonderlink app, unless they do tell me that there is a way of, uh, you know, increasing the fidelity or the sampling rate of those CSV files. So there you have it. That's what I've managed to get out of the Wonderlink app so far. Now, I'm not primarily using it for navigation. It's really about data logging. So have I wasted my money on this device? Yeah, I did kind of throw away £200 on it. Um, but it's kind of a successful failure because that screen overlay, that screen display that I can recall from the phone, that gets a lot of data. It's not in the best format, but I can work with it. I can get it on my screen in my videos. Uh, the trap day ones primarily and that is is quite nice and i might be able to get something out of the uh, the csv files that are recording once per second there are some data tracks that don't have to be recorded all the time like um, engine temperature or uh, fuel consumption so i might be able to still work with that so not bad in the grand scheme of things really i'm sure i'll be making use of it 
In another video, I'll show you how to uh, connect the phone to that magnetic mount. It's not a difficult thing, but it's uh, interesting nonetheless. It's only be a short video, I'm sure. Um, tomorrow, I'm at Donington, so I'll get some data logging going on. Now, with that screen recording, what I've noticed with the Android phone is I can turn the screen brightness down on the phone so it doesn't actually distract while you're riding, but the recording the brightness doesn't change at all. So that's good. <laughs> so I don't have to have it blaring at me while I'm while I'm riding. I will secure the phone to that mount with, uh, with a cable tie or something like that to make sure the phone doesn't go anywhere unless I'm upside down, <laughs> which hopefully won't be the case. So thanks for hanging out with me, folks. I shall see you in another video soon. Take care, ta-la.